Hello there, my fellow battle brothers, and welcome to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapter's lore. Last week, we introduced another canon chapter, which is kinda rare now among a sea of homebrews, and they are known as the Tome Keepers. This is gonna be our second episode on them, and while last time we learned about their history, today we shall learn about their doctrine, beliefs, and relics. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? While most other chapters may rely on aggression or overwhelming firepower to secure their victories, the Tome Keepers have a heavy emphasis on clinical battlefield discipline, relying on superior tactics and an understanding of the enemy's capabilities. Alongside their usual everyday training, the brothers are required to conduct in-depth studies of the enemies that they face, to analyze all their major engagements and to become proficient in the chapter's battle cant. With all that knowledge, a brother will know what strategy is being employed and his role inside it in just a few short words. Each battle brother is also encouraged to keep a journal of his own battlefield observations and learnings thereby furthering the knowledge of the chapter as a whole and enabling the constant development and employment of new tactics and strategies. The Tome Keeper chapter cult places strong emphasis on the cultural traditions of their homeworld of Istroma, while upholding the teachings that science and reason should prevail over superstition and blind faith. As a whole, the warriors of the chapter are scholars almost as much as soldiers. They are considered thoughtful, measured, and humanitarian by imperial standards, and they will often put civilian lives before their own. The Tome Keepers are also a chapter fixated on history. They are comprised of warriors who also double as archivists, scribes, and librarians, charged with maintaining repositories of information and books. The exact reason for that obsession with obtaining and recording knowledge is not well known outside the chapter. However, it has been noted by Imperial scholars that the Tome Keepers possess a higher than average number of librarians in their ranks. This could be due to their homeworld's proximity to the nearby White Dwarf Star, whose radiation can be the cause for many of these Stromans suffering genetic mutations and the creation of psychers. Due to the sacred oath that the chapter swore to protect the Stromas most sacred texts stored in the world's massive library, Combined with the short lifespan of the planet's population, the chapter feels obligated to uphold the traditions of their homeworld. Therefore, every Tome Keeper battle brother keeps his own account of his deeds and day-to-day -day activity recorded within their own books for posterity. It is not uncommon for the warriors to carry a copy of that book into battle, as the original is not particularly suited to the rigors of war. Thus, these symbolic copies of the original are firmly secured on their belts and kept among their personal effects. These journals are updated after each battle, the battle brother putting down observations on the enemy or tactics and strategies that work particularly well. In that way, the chapter is able to continue the cultural practices of their homeworld while also accumulating vast amounts of knowledge and information on the galaxy's biggest enemies. However, this constant recording of everything they see and experience is often a point of contention when the chapter has to work with other factions, because the Tome Keepers have a tendency to see and record things which others might not want them to. The Tomes are usually uncensored in their own ranks, which in effect strengthens the Space Marines' morality compared to other, more bellicose chapters. However, these unsolicited observations could easily see the chapter come into conflict with other Imperial factions, like the Inquisition or the Ecclesiarchy, if they're not careful. As of yet though, the chapter has managed to avoid such contentious entanglements. It has been noted in the past though, that when the chapter has gone into battle alongside other chapters of the Adeptus Astartes, they have almost come to blows over a difference of opinion or something done by the other chapter that they shouldn't have observed. Due to the augmented lifespan of the Tome Keepers, as Space Marines, this has become a source of conflict with the local people of their homeworld, whose culture is literally shaped by the shortness of their lives. 
Rather than revering the Space Marines as demigods, they view the Astartes as untouchables, unnatural outcasts whose genetic enhancements upset the normal cycle of life and death. Even the Tome Keepers themselves are conflicted between their duty to serve and their natural place among the dead. As far as the Dreadnoughts are concerned, they are highly venerated by the chapter, for they have endured hundreds, if not thousands of years of warfare, thereby accumulating a vast amount of knowledge and battlefield experience. Although formidable fighting machines in their own right, the Dreadnoughts will also offer tactical or strategic advice to the Strike Force they are fighting alongside and, in some cases, even lead task forces where their field of experience is of particular relevance. For the Tome Keepers actually born on Instroma, Dreadnoughts also have a special significance, for they see them as the ideal balance between death and duty. Upon interment in a Dreadnought sarcophagus, the Battle Brothers book is closed, signifying their passing and enabling their soul to take its rightful place in death alongside their ancestors. Yet, through ancient technology and a dreadnought chassis, their mortal remnants continue to fulfill their duty to the chapter. It is an idealized fate that many Tome Keepers actually aspire to. As mentioned before, the Tome Keepers have adopted multiple traditions out of Istroma, including the closing of the book ceremony. When a battle brother is killed, their personal tome is retrieved by an apothecary alongside their progenoid glands. Following the engagement, one of the warrior's peers or friends will write the final chapter in their tome, detailing their heroic death. A ceremony, officiated by the company orator, is then held to celebrate the deeds of the fallen brother. During this ritual, the book is ceremonially closed and wrapped in a red ribbon, signifying the sacrifice. In time, the journals of the fallen are all returned to Istroma and the library of Nivene. Like most loyal space marines, the Tome Keepers do adorn their armor with purity seals to show they are not tainted by chaos. In addition, each battle brother is permitted to add a strip of parchment to a purity seal inscribed with the names of those who have died fighting alongside him. It is said that when Chapter Master Sabium finally fell in battle, his purity seals had over 800 names recorded on them, every single one written in his hand. Ever since the chapter's inception, 96 Battle Brothers had been seconded to the Death Watch. Their understanding of Zeno's races and their meticulous record-keeping on these topics providing a massive boon to the alien hunters. Also, their conflict with the Thoked Dynasty Necrons has already proven invaluable in the war for the Pariah Nexus. A couple of famous chapter relics include, and the first one is one that we mentioned last time as well. The so-called White Book is considered by far the most sacred and important relic of the chapter. The tome is securely stored in the chapter's collection of knowledge within their fortress monastery. It is not guarded, although it is not easily accessible either. In fact, it is impossible to get close to it at all, for it is contained entirely at odds with the design of the rest of the chapter's librarians. Where those cloistered holes are constructed out of granite and bedecked in carved wooden shelves, the stasis chamber containing the white book is of dark metal, old and pitted. Scans reveal the temporal distortion of the stasis field containing the book to be approximately 9,000 years old, which predates even the chapter itself. The book is visible through a small observation window akin to an armored porthole. It floats above a suspensor lectern, held perfectly motionless by the stasis field inside the chamber. It is roughly four hands tall by six hands wide, and the pages appear to be made out of pseudo-paper as opposed to parchment or vellum. It lies open and faces towards the viewer, making it impossible to analyze the cover itself, which most assume is white given the actual name of the book. The clasp is visible, however, it is made of silver or a silver-esque material and chased with geometric patterns. The spine of the book seems to be broken by the way the pages fall open, and there are clear signs of fire damage too, although nothing substantial. Bookmarks protrude from several pages, although there is no way of telling the significance of them. 
The book is open close to the center on page 144. It is not known if that was done deliberately to balance the book, or if there is a particular significance of those pages. The transcription is legible, written in high Gothic on a steady hand. It makes mention of discovering the truth in all things, and that knowledge should be valued above all else. Nothing that a keen observer would describe as outright heretical. Indeed, it is a maxim espoused by those who work for the Inquisition. However, the knowledge contained on those visible pages ends on a great cliffhanger. One can only imagine the frustration of the chapter's librarians being unable to access the knowledge inside. Another important book of the chapter is known as the Tome Empiricus. This is a relic of the Tome Keeper's third company and contains the records of the greatest military feats done by them. It hangs out of the company standard carried by the third company's ancient and it accompanies them when they go to battle. Although copies of the Tome Empiricus do exist, the book itself is still treated with great reverence, and is protected by a powerful force field. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Tome Keepers for today. With this love of knowledge and archiving everything, they are almost like the old Thousand Sons minus the fixation with magic, which is probably a good thing. We are not finished with them though, as next time we're gonna talk about their campaigns and war stories. What about you though? What are your thoughts about the beliefs of these fellows? Do you like a chapter who pursues something other than battle, or do you find it unnatural? Do share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share, and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and have an awesome healthy day. The Emperor protects.